ten. The Book of the Double Twilight, Canto Two, The Gospel of Death and Vanity of the Ideal, page six hundred and fifteen, second line. A prisoner hailed by a spiritual cord of thy own sensuous will, the ardent slave, thou sendest eagle poised to meet the sun, words winged with the red splendor of thy heart, but knowledge dwells not in the passionate heart. The heart's words fall back unheard from wisdom's throne. Vain is thy longing to build heaven on earth. Artificer of ideal and idea, mind, child of matter in the womb of life, to higher levels persuades his parents' steps, inapt, they follow ill the daring guide. But mind, a glorious traveller in the sky, walks lamely on the earth with footsteps slow. Hardly he can mount the life's rebellious stuff. Hardly can he hold the galloping hose of sense. His thoughts look straight into the very heavens. They draw their gold from a celestial mine, his axe work painfully a common ore. All thy high dreams were made by matter's mind to solace its dull work in matter's jail, its only house where it alone seems true. A solid image of reality carved out of being to prop the works of time, matter on the firm earth sits strong and sure. It is the first born of created things, it stands the last when mind and life are slain, and if it ended all would cease to be. All else is only its outcome or its face. Thy soul is a brief flower by the gardener mind, created in thy matter's terrain plot. It perishes with the plant on which it grows, for from earth's sap it draws its heavenly hue. Thy thoughts are gleams that pass on matter's verge, thy life a lapsing wave on matter's sea. A careful steward of truth's limited means, treasuring her founded facts from the squandering power, it tethers mind to the tent pose of sense, to a leaden grey routine, clamps life's caprice, and ties all creatures with the cords of law. A vessel of transmuting alchemies, a glue that sticks together mind and life. If matter fails, all crumbling cracks and falls. All upon matter stands as on a rock. Yet the security and guarantor, pressed for credentials and imposture, proves a cheat of substance. Where no substance is, an appearance and a symbol and a knot, its forms have no original right to birth. Its aspect of a fixed stability is the cover of a captive motion's thrill and order of the steps of energy's dance, whose footmarks leave forever the same signs, a concrete face of unsubstantial time, a trickle dotting the emptiness of space, a stable seeming moment without change, yet Change arrives, and the last change is death. What seemed most real once is Nihil's show. Its figures are snares that trap and prison the sense. The beginningless void was its artificer. 
Nothing is there but aspects limbed by chance and seeming shapes of seeming energy, all by death's mercy breathe and live a while, all think and act by the inconscious grace, addict of the roseate luxury of thy thoughts, turn not thy gaze within thyself to look at visions in the gleaming crystal mind, close not thy lids to dream the forms of gods, at last to open thy eyes, consent and see the stuff of which thou and the world are made, inconscient in the dumb inconscient void, inexplicably a moving world sprang forth, a while secure, happily insensible, it could not rest content with its own truth.